All right, so today, guys, I'm going to show you how to shade the handles of your tools, okay? So I've got um, this example here, and I'm going to turn this so that it can, can kind of hopefully, hopefully see it a little bit better. There we go. Not too far. There. So this, one, this is a little bit more finished. Um, for the wrench, you know, we've got um, really shiny metal, so you can see how... I uh, shaded this part. I will be talking about how to shade the text also, too. This example is, of course, on the gray paper, so I was using white charcoal on that. And then you can see the plier handles right here, how I shaded that in. Okay. Now, remember that when you're shading, guys, you, for every form change, there should be a value change. That's the thing you have to remember. So for these little edges here on the pliers, that's sort of like a kind of a round, um, kind of molded edge around the uh, text. So this section right here is lower, and this is kind of rounded and, and really and pops up. So because it's such a quick form change, you're going to have quick value changes. So if the form changes quickly, the value is going to change quickly too. So what you'll notice is that you will get some really dark values next to some really light values, and there may not be that transition in between, um, especially, too, on the text, too, because the text on the wrench, especially because it pops out and it's a relief, um, those are little forms that are changing very quickly. You're going to see some abrupt form changes there, too, or value changes also there, too. So you'll have, like, white next to really dark, okay? Now, on the pliers, that's going to be a little bit different. So on the pliers, because it's not, it's not necessarily a shiny surface, you will see uh, some smoother transitions between those values. Uh, but at the same time, you do have to remember, like, from one side to the other side, it's changing its form. So there needs to be value change that happens from the left to the right side of your uh, handle. So that's what you guys will be working on. That looks a little bit better looking at it that way. Okay? So I'm going to be working back and forth between the two tools again. These are just my more finished examples. This is the one I'm going to work on here. And like I said, I'm going to um, work on the wrench first. since I started on the pliers last time. So let me kind of arrange this here. I need to move my camera. All right, so what I'm going to do, guys, again, I find that I do the best job if I just focus on one section at a time. So I'm going to try to move my stuff here without messing things up. All right. All right, I'm just going to focus my attention on the bottom here. And I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There. So as you guys can see, I've got some really dark, I've got my drawing is pretty dark. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get rid of these guidelines again that I have on my drawing that I no longer need anymore now that I've got my drawing finished. So I'm going to get rid of that stuff. And I'm also, too, just going to take my pink eraser and just kind of go over these dark lines and essentially lighten them up. And I'm doing that with the pink eraser. I'm not using the kneaded eraser. Again, that's just in an effort to hide those uh, lines because I don't want to see them when I'm finished. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, make sure I've got the right tool up. Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, what I like to do, is I like to start by finding my darker value. So what I'm going to do is just kind of start in one section again. So I'm just going to work on this sort of like rim that kind of outlines my entire um, tool. And I'm just going to start kind of plugging in where I see some of these darker values, and I'm starting with my 3B pencil. And what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the shape that that shadow or value is making. And 
And so I just see sort of like this kind of thicker outline right here. And it gets thin down here. And so all I'm doing is I'm just identifying the shape that that value makes. And it, again, it's kind of like that concept of paint by number. So if you ever went out and bought one of those paint by number sets, you know, all those values and colors have been outlined and mapped out for you. And all you have to do is plug in the corresponding color to the number that it shows. That's basically what I'm doing here. Can also, too, work on this circle. So I'm just taking my 3B, and I'm just working exclusively in the bottom part of this tool. And I'm just going to basically pop this 3B wherever I think it needs to be. It's not going to go everywhere, but it's just going to go wherever I think it needs to go. And so I'm just I'm mapping out the shadows just the same way that I did the drawing. I do like to start with the 3B just because I think it's a good sort of middle ground. I can always make things darker and then whatever is left um, alone is going to turn into my lighter values and I can plug that in and fill that those areas in later. Now all the areas that I need that I see that are the bright and shiny spots I am going to leave alone. So those parts are technically already finished. I just need to work around those. So whenever you're doing this, when you're shading, you are thinking constantly. You're asking yourself what shape it is, where do you see, um, how long it is, how big it is, how tall it is. And then you're essentially plugging that information onto your paper. So you're just basically recording information. Now this is not a quick process. This is something that's going to take time. If you're zipping through this too fast, you're going to make your tool look very flat. It may not even look metallic when you're finished. So you need to make sure that you're taking the time to do a good job. And you got to be thinking about everything that you're doing every step of the way. And as you can see, I can make lighter values and darker values with this 3B, so it's, it's, very, it's very useful. But I'm leaving those areas that I think look bright and shiny, or those white areas, I'm leaving those alone. Now, if I were to sit here and do this from start to finish, this would take me quite a while to do. I'm not going to sit here and do this forever because I want to be able to walk around and help you guys. But basically what you need to do is you just need to map out what you see. Look at those shapes. I'm going to go in now with my 6B and some of this and just kind of pop out some really good darks so I can start to see things pop. Again, I'm just looking at where that needs to be and just plugging it in. It's not going to go everywhere.
You want to avoid trying to do a big area all at once. When you do that, you tend to approach it more like a coloring book than you would um, a realistic drawing. So make sure that you are paying attention to what you're doing. make that thinner. And there are points in my drawing where I always think it kind of looks like a hot mess and I've got some fixing I need to do, but that's normal. But whatever I do, I don't stop. I don't stop working on it. Sometimes maybe when I'm getting frustrated with an area, I might move on to something different just to kind of give myself a little break from that spot. That's perfectly fine and normal. But you want to keep your eyes on the tool because that's where the answers are. And anytime you think you're losing something, like you can't see an edge very well or something is getting lost, it's most likely because you need to get more contrast in an area. So that Remember, refers to the differences between the values. And the, va and the value is what's going to make that pop. So I'm just going back. I'm going through. I haven't even used my 4-H yet. I will here soon. In fact, I think I'm ready to kind of use it now. Now, if you've noticed, we haven't talked about cast shadows yet, and we're not going to um, quite yet. So you guys all can see that you have a cast shadow that's coming off your tool onto the um, white backing paper that's on there. We're not dealing with that yet. That will be later. If you went ahead and drawed it in, that's fine. All right, so that's, I've got that kind of started. But again, you can see this example. It's a little bit more finished, okay? I'll talk about text after I get the people who are working on the plier started. So I'll get plier people started here. And then I'll go back to the text. But for those of you who are working on the wrench, you guys can continue to kind of work all the way up your uh, handle. Okay? So I'll zoom out a little bit. So you can continue to work all the way up and trying to join that up with the top of the tool that you've already been working on. Okay? And I'll deal with um, the text and even that gear that's in there. I'll show you guys how to do that next. Okay. All right, so for those of you who have pliers, let me move this so you can see it. We'll get in there. Put this up pretty high, so switch out my tool. All right, so plier people. I'm going to kind of move this. All right, 
my drawing's kind of getting a little dirty here because I've been putting stuff on top of it. All right, so again, first thing I'm going to do, and I'll deal with the right one here. I'm going to go through with my pink eraser and just kind of lighten up my pencil lines just so, again, that way it's easier to hide them when I'm finished or as I'm kind of shading this in. I'm not going to do that to my Pittsburgh here because I need that to actually be pretty dark, so I'm going to leave that. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I, if I look at my tool, my light is coming from the right side on this. So the right side of my um, handles is going to be the lightest. So it's going to go for me, lightest here on the right, it's going to be medium here in the center, and it's going to be darkest over here on the, on the opposite side on the left. And the same thing goes for the, uh, the handle here on the left. So it's going to be lightest here on the right, medium here in the middle, and darkest over here on the far left. So you want to make sure that you know where your light is coming from. Okay, now maybe you, you could be in a different situation, but a lot of you guys will notice that your light is either coming from the left or from the right. If your light is coming from the left, then the left side of your handle is going to be the lightest part. Or, I'm sorry, if your light's coming, yeah, from the left. <laughs> If your light's coming from the left, the left side is going to be the lightest part. The right sides of your handles will be the darkest. If your light's coming from the right, the right side of your handles is going to be the lightest. And the left side of each one of those handles is going to be the darkest. But if you're somebody whose light is coming straight at you, that might be different. If your light is coming straight at the tool, then the lightest part will probably be the very center of your handle. The darkest will be on both the left and the, and the right. So just think about that. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because my light is coming from the right, I'm going to start over here on the left side of my handle. And I'm going to, I'll zoom into this part here. So I'm going to start over here since this is the darkest part of my tool. And I'm starting with my 3B pencil. Now, with the 3B, again, I can make it look dark and I can make it look light just by varying the pressure and the layer. So I'm going to kind of... Now, I don't necessarily see it gradate. Like, it doesn't have that smooth, necessarily that smooth transition from light to dark. Um, so I do see an edge that starts about right here. So it kind of goes from a light gray to white. So I'm going to get that edge right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and start filling this in with a thin layer, leaving my very right side um, light, lightest or white, just because that's where my light's coming from. Now look at your tool. Don't do what I'm doing necessarily because your tool is set up different. In fact, you have a different tool than I do, and you have a different light, um, light source than I do. So you should be doing what your tool is telling you to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build this up, and I'm just going to look for any subtle changes in these values. And I actually see it's a little bit dark here. It's got some spots where it's a little darker. And again, I'm just going to look at the shapes that those shadows and values are making. some sections that are a little bit lighter and a little bit darker, and I'm going to add that in. And again, what I notice here 
is that I do kind of have an edge here that divides like my light gray from my white. It doesn't necessarily transition out. And there is some patchiness on the, on the handle, so it's not all nice and smooth, and I'm going to make sure that I show that. It could be just some variations of sort of that handle that was formed around the metal. Could be a little bit bumpy, not as smooth as what we think. So it may have to do with a lot of what's underneath this. So after I kind of get that started, then... Again, I haven't used my 4-H yet. I'm going to go with my 6-B and kind of make some of these parts darker that need to be darker. This very edge here is going to get pretty dark. And that I do sort of see blending out. So where it blends out, I want it to blend out. Where it does it, I don't. So I just put a little bit of 6B in there. I didn't need a whole lot. And then 4H, I probably am just going to use that to do a lot of just sort of blending in and filling in some of these graininess of the paper. And just cementing this lighter color, lighter value in a little bit more. So there's the start of that handle. Now for the text on the pliers, because that was printed on, all I need to do is just really go in. It's almost like what you would do on a word processing document, is just kind of bold it. So I'm going to go in with my 6B. And you may need to sharpen your pencil for this. Just going to go in and just really kind of uh, get this Pittsburgh established. Clean up areas that need to be cleaned up. Okay, so you can see how I started doing that there. I'd go through and do that to all of that. And then I just shade right on top of it as I go up. Okay, I can just shade right on top of that and it's not going to make any difference. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to, I think I've got the pliers on. The pliers are too, too hard, the handles. So plier people, you guys can continue to work on your handles. For those of you that have the wrench, I'm going to go back to the wrench for you. And I'm going to deal with the text for you. So hopefully you've just been working around that. Let me figure out a way to... Make sure that that's high. Okay, so let me switch out tools here. All right, so for the um, for the the raised part of these of this text, okay, um, all you really need is for those of you who are on white paper, you may only need to use your three B and your six B on this. For those of you that are gray paper, the only thing that you need is the 6B and the white charcoal pencil, okay? 
So for those of you that have a wrench and have gray paper, you need your white charcoal and 6B pencil in your hand. For those of you that have the white paper for the wrench, you need just a 3B and maybe 6B, okay? So again, because this area has such big form changes, okay, all I'm going to do, okay, is I'm just going to go in again and just identify where I see the dark and the light. So I'm just going to look at each letter, and because this is such a drastic form change, I'm not going to really be doing any smooth shading, so I'm not going to be shading like this. I'm really just going to be laying down shapes. And I'm going to avoid all the areas that have to be white. So what I did was I just picked out the places that needed to be dark, and I did that with my 3B. Again, I'm on white paper for this. Go in with a um, 6B and find my darkest value, which is black, and just plug that in. And then I'm going to just take that 3B and basically shade over top of that letter wherever it needs to be gray. And then I'm just going to skip the parts that need to be white. So there's my D. Okay. So I'm not just working on the letter. I'm actually working also around it. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the E. Of course, I've got a different word than you guys do. So I'm just going through each letter, and I'm just finding where those shadows are around it. So there's my E just to start with my 3B, and then I'm going to go in with my 6B and pick out the parts that need to be black. We don't have any uh, stickier erasers. Um, okay. Uh, sometimes what kids do with those kneaded erasers is they just kind of ball them up in one big shape. Do you guys have at least one in there? then split it up. It probably is just, it's all four of them just probably together. All right, so now that I use my 3B and my 6B on that, I'm going to go back over with my 3B, and I'm basically going to fill in the letter everywhere except for where I see white, which is right there. So there's my E. So I'm working around the letter and then in the letter. I'll do one more letter here. Let's see here, I need to make sure. That having a sharpened pencil for the letters does help. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to do the G. So I'm starting again with my 3B. Trying to find where those shadows are. And I'm working around the letter. That was with my 3B. Now I'm going to go with my 6B and just pop in the darkest spots around it. That's not going to be everywhere. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to take my 3B and very lightly use that to fill in. I'll fill in the letter wherever I see gray, and I'm going to leave what needs to be white. Leave it alone since I am on white paper. So there's my G. For those of you that have the gray paper, basically what you're going to do, I'll show this example. Okay. 
You're going to use that, just the 6B. You're going to find where the shadows are around the letter. And then all you're going to do is find the areas that are white on the letter. Just plug those in with the white charcoal and leave the rest the gray of the paper. And then you've got your letters. So that's all you got to do. All right, now the next thing I'm going to show you guys on the wrench is this gear that's up there. So I'm going to actually approach this gear this almost the exact same way I did the letters. Okay, So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start with my 3B. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to just basically look at the area around the gear and kind of fill that in because it's very dark in there. So I'm just going to... Shade around it. Because it is darker in there. I'm just going to put a layer of 3B under here. Now I most likely will be going in and adding 6B in there just to make it even darker. This is going to frame out that section. You should see it already start to pop out. Okay, so I filled in that area. I'm going to go ahead and go in with 6B and find the areas that need to be really dark and plug those in around that area. And again, it's not going to be everywhere. For me, I see a lot of these darkest values off to the side in these corners. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my 3B, and I'm going to kind of just deal with the area around those threads. Now, remember, again, you want to leave all the parts that need to be white alone. So I should start to see the threads popping out. So just like I did the letters, I'm working around these threads. So on the letters, I worked around the letters first. And then I dealt with them. And then I'm going to go in with my 6B and again find those darkest areas and just kind of plug those in. And now you should start to see it pop. Now for me, I've got a lot of white that's hitting the tops of the thread, so I'm not going to be doing too much to those. All that I probably will be doing, my three, darken up here. It's probably going in with a bit of 4H. I got my 4H pencil, and I'm just going to put a little layer of 4H wherever the white is not on those threads. And then I would call that a day on that part.
So there's that. Okay. And again, I approached this the exact same way I basically did the letters. Okay. So again, if you're if you're working in this area with that gear and you're working on it and you find that you're losing those threads, it's because you don't have enough contrast between them. So you need more differences, you need more differences between those values. So a lot of times going in there with like a 6B and just kind of nailing in those dark areas is all that you need to do. Okay? So you guys have all the information you need to finish things up on these two tools, okay? So the rest of the time is for you guys to work on it. And then tomorrow we start tool number two.